Hello everyone, this is Killenberg. Today I'm going to be reviewing Halloween 2. Like the name implies, this is a sequel to John Carpenter's Halloween. This was actually supposed to be the end of the Michael Myers story, but because of the reception of Halloween 3, they brought Michael Myers back in Halloween 4. But yeah, this movie starts out on the same night as the first one. And there's a part where one of the neighbors says that he's been trick-or-treated to death tonight. Loomis tells him he doesn't know what death is. Now down the street, we see a girl whose name is apparently Alice, speaking on the phone with a friend. Her friend is actually played by the same woman that played Annie in the first one. We only hear her voice though. But yeah, Alice turns on the radio. Oh, they're talking about, you know, the Michael Myers thing, for those that don't know. But Alice goes in the living room, and Michael Myers stabs her, and we see blood squirt on her neck. And paramedics take Lori away in a stretcher. And in the ambulance, she meets Jimmy. Jimmy makes a comment that Lori goes to her brother's school. Now Loomis and Brackett search the neighborhood, and they see a young man wearing a white mask, similar to Michael Myers, but it has blonde hair. Cop car hits him into a van and it explodes. Now later on in the movie, a few teenagers say that Ben Tramer was drinking and wearing a mask similar to that. For those that don't know who Ben Tramer is, Lori had a crush on him in the original. Now Hunt comes and tells Lee about Annie being one of the victims. And we see that her throat is slit. A lot of people think this is a continuity error, but it's not. If you really pay attention, like I said in my review of the first one, he actually slits her throat. Now, Brackett blames Loomis for letting Michael Myers out, because apparently no one was paying attention. He was the one trying to keep him locked up. But yeah, Brackett ends up going home, and that leaves Hunt in charge. Now, a young nurse named Karen shows up. She's late, though. Now, Jimmy goes in Lori's room to get closer to her, and he actually tells her about Michael Myers. Well, you know that the maniac is Michael Myers. Mrs. Alves interrupts. Mr. Garrett explores the basement. The phone lines are down for anyone that doesn't know. But Mr. Garrett is actually killed by Michael Myers. Michael Myers hits him with the back of the hammer. Now Loomis and Hunt investigate a break-in at the local elementary school. And they find out Michael Myers has been there. There is a child's drawing of a family. And there is a knife sticking out of the image of the sister. And the word Solwyn is written in blood on the chalkboard. And yes, I know people are going to say you mean Sam Hain, because that's how they pronounce it in the movie. But Loomis explains that Solwyn is a Celtic word, and he explains like what it means. But yeah, Marion Chambers shows up, and she reveals that he's being sent back to Smith's Grove. And there's a marshal waiting for him. It was orders from the governor. Now while they're being taken away, Chambers says there's a file they didn't let him see. The file reveals that Lori Strode is Michael Myers' sister. Now Bud and Karen are in the therapy pool together. Now Michael Myers turns it up, and Bud actually gets out to see what's going on. Michael Myers strangles Bud, and then he puts Karen's head into the tub until her face melts. But Lori has a reaction to the medication, and she goes into shock. When Janet goes to get Dr. Mixter, she finds him dead with a needle in his eyeball. Myers then kills her with another needle. Myers does go in Lori's room and stabs the bed, but she is gone. Oh, Jimmy finds Mrs. Alves, but blood was dripping from the IV tube, and he ends up slipping on the floor. Now in the marshal's car, Loomis threatens the marshal with a gun, and he goes back. Now after Lori gets out, Jimmy gets in his car, and Lori's hiding in it, but he passes out. Now his fate's actually unknown. In the TV cut, it's revealed that he's alive, but some people argue that the TV cut's not canon. Oh, and there's a part where Michael Myers walks through a door, and I don't mean like what you would think that means. He literally walks through the glass of the door. But he actually eventually slits the marshal's throat. They actually end up going in an operating room, and Loomis gives Lori his gun. She actually shoots him in both of his eyes, but he starts swinging the scalpel, but they trick him with the oxygen tanks. But yeah, Loomis tells her to run, but yeah, Loomis actually ignites his lighter, and it causes an explosion. Myers continues to go after Lori, but he ends up passing out. And yes, this was supposed to kill him. He, Michael Myers was supposed to die from this. Now morning, Lori is taken out of the hospital and placed in another ambulance. The last thing we see is Michael Myers' body burning, and that's the end. Oh, we also hear Mr. Sandman. I actually like this movie. I would say this is my favorite sequel. And I know that's like most people's opinion, but there are some people who think the fourth one is better. But I also thought it was creative how it takes place in the same night. Another interesting fact about this movie is Jamie Lee Curtis is actually wearing a wig in it. This was actually made when she started cutting her hair short, so that's why she wears a wig. Alright, I hope you enjoyed my review of Halloween 2. I'll see you guys again soon.